All right, so this is a live project. I'll be explaining some things. I'm going to be quantizing the drum. And if you don't know how to key drum now, I'll link, I'll attach a, a video that teaches on the key drumming, figuring, and all of that. So I'll be quantizing a live drum I played. So I'm going to be breaking down some of the live drum um, stuff, um, jobs I'm actually doing. Have not completed, so let me just so this part of So let's just jump into the drums basically. I think I've quantized some parts up to this part. Let me just turn off some other instrument I don't need. I think I just need the loops and the the keyboard is not even yet So I want to go into the MIDI section because that's where I'll be working more. Um yeah, when I played the drums, note it wasn't as smooth as this. I made some modi 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 no sorry modifications. Okay, all right. So from here, what I do is to move this to the nearest line. You know, depending. Yeah. So I know this is gonna like I explained in the first quantization. So all right, so I I'm moving this. Now note that this is a cover. So what I will do is after I finish uh, mixing everything and uh, doing all of all the old stuff, I'm going to shift the pitch. Um, if I shift the pitch, it's going to affect the drums and all of that. But I might need to pitch it a little bit up. Or better stay, um, I might just leave it like that. So let me just continue. So yeah, what I'm just doing basically in this um, drums is I'm moving them to the nearest uh, major line here. Yeah. So you could see that is not on quantize. It's not sorry, it's not quantized. So you want to make this the smallest as possible. So that should be. It's made mistake. Move this control Z. So. Don't worry, I'm going to be explaining, I'm still going to be breaking down this live drum mix as soon as I'm done with the project. So from here, there's another, the things are not on time in here. So, uh, Sorry, that was my phone. I'm supposed to disconnect it after that. So let's do this and let's hear how it sounds from there. So. So you could see from here. So what you could actually just do even before mixing everything, you could see it's much more easy. Since when this drum is on beat, you could just keep moving all this to the nearest line then. Probably listening to it again from the beginning and see what multiplication you could do. So that's how I'm quantizing all of this. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This must be a mistake, but I'm not sure. You could hear that uh, that extra uh, tone. I might actually copy this drums to another. Um, 
log in before I mix it. But I'll explain what is going on. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. So. What you want to do is to spend a lot of time. Yeah, it's boring doing all of this. Trust me, very boring, but you need to do it. So that it sounds more timing. Uh, you want to do everything like, so um, definitely some will be on timing, some will not be on timing. And notice, um, also you have to also listen to it to check what is not on um, after doing all of these things you want to check everything to see if it's actually sound well and the way i pay attention to is the rolling because i'm playing it with my hands i can definitely not do complex rollings like that it's to do some people are good at doing it live so what i do is i play the rolling i can play then manipulate it thereafter if there is anything i think i need to manipulate so I think that's just what I do basically. So let's see. All right. All right. So there's one thing at the beginning. I just remember that this. So I think. So, yeah, this was actually played separately, you understand, just to give the drum feel. So one thing about production, especially gospel, you have to be vast with how gospel things sound. That's not on like um, Afro, you could just, you have to have idea of how each music sounds. So also, when you're also producing Afro, you also have to listen to how the feel afro gives you understand so one of the issue i had back then was i was trying to produce afro like i was producing gospel so and what i did was to listen to people and listen to the idea how people go about afro so producing a live gospel can be much more tasking you know, like very very tasking especially when you want to when you're the one who wants to play everything and you want it to sound as real as possible and that's one thing people really love about my kind of stuff because i play it and you know it sounds so real like sorry you won't know it's vst you think everything was played live all right so that's another thing you also have to know how to emulate each instrument or so on on the on your midi controller or on your keyboard so what i advise people to do is before you produce a, a new drain maybe you're producing a drain of music you're not familiar with i what i do is i go to listen to similar drain drain of music then get ideas from it i remember my promise cover i'm sorry i don't i don't want to break down now because it's going to take my time. Uh, see, I had to listen to get ideas from the original version of the song and, you know, listen to one top gospel producer cover also. So I got one or two ideas. So I was good to go. Yeah, mixing live drums like this is can be so tasking. I won't lie to you. It's much more, you know, like and playing, doing a gospel production on like Afro, where you play one thing and you copy, can be so stressful, you know. So like now you could see as I'm quantizing everything one by one. I have to do this for, if the track is about three minutes long, I have to do everything individually, just like that, you know. By the time I do that finish, I have to listen to the whole song again and, you know, see where I need to make mod modifications. In fact, sometimes I need to replay so 
some things. All right. So that's how I go with the drawn mix. So let me see if I can make a modification modification to a rolling then I Let's see this. Uh, I think the rolling is too childish. So let's see. Probably we could have probably a double kick. Let me see. No, I think. What I just did here, I think I just added the kick just to make that rolling a, a foot, um, a bit foot. <laughs> so it's so. I did was you know I just played so I, I used my hand to manipulate it so something like that one two three this so something like that so I just manipulated it So yeah, I had a crash after after it, in which I didn't really like, since when there was a crash coming in. So I would just bring that down. So it sounds like it's. So that's what I would just do here. So so that there's not too much um, crash. So. I think this is the IRT. So I took out the Hyatt here because it's not supposed to be there. It's sounding so. This IAT is sounding So the Hyatt is sounding really, really funny here. Yeah? So So I want the IELTS to one, two, 
So to get it, let's off the loop. Sorry. Let's switch off the loop. So I want it to sound like uh, So let's put one in the middle. Let's see how it sounds. If I'm not okay with it. So, um, what I'm going to do now to this drum is, I'm going to replay the hi-hat from here. So, I'm doing all this, I'm going to replace the hi-hat from here, because it sounds funny. So, I'm going to delete all of this. And also, if you have this on, you should overdub, but what I want to do is to delete all this hi-hat up to this point. So yeah, I've played it, but I can still replay this part alone. So I think after this, I'll stop this video on the drums. So what you want to do is you want to come, you want to come to your audio settings if you've increased it for mixing and drop it to so about 256 or depending on how low you want it. So let's hit the record button. Sorry, then now when you when you hit play, you can just hit it. So I think I'm not I'm not okay with that stuff. So what I want to play is basically So that's what I want to play like So I think it's quite rough, so but I'm gonna fix it. So let's see. I'm gonna try to fix the issue. So let's see. think it's quite low the high art is quite low here so i could just bring it up a little bit oh shit so when you do this you affect all the oval um velocity so what you want to do is bring this backwards adjust this front then so i don't have just all the so i didn't play all of this well actually 
so much probably bringing them up a little bit one by one with my hand so so please note when you want to move things down the same line you want to move it away so that you bring it so you don't make mistakes because once you do it from here you carry everything together like that so which will sound well so let's do this for this so let's do this for this so you could always look down below to see if everything is on the same line so that's what i want the just like a normal drum higher sequence so i think that's that's about that so you could manipulate your drums to sound as much well and professional as possible so you also want to pay attention to um how a live drum drummer will attack a drum you understand if you don't have a job of that it's best you get someone who has a job of drums to track or listen to guide you on it so i think that's that about this drum contest you could come up with crazy rollings for time so that's just it